QLED, OLED, Mini LED, or Mini LED if you must. Then you got XLED, ULED, FALD, EARC. Folks, this is getting kind of ridiculous. What if you just wanna buy a TV? Do you really need to know all this stuff? Well, it does help, and I have good news for you. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Hey everybody, I'm Caleb Dennison for Digital Trends, and while we wait for all the sweet new 2020 TVs to arrive so we can start reviewing them and comparing them, I thought we'd take a second to make a video explaining the increasingly dense amount of TV acronyms that you will encounter throughout the year as you watch reviews and maybe try to make a purchase decision. If you're a TV enthusiast, you know about most of these already, but if you're just starting to take a look around, I think you'll find this explainer super helpful. So let's get to it. We start with the most common kind of TV today, the LED TV. LED stands for light emitting diode, and it actually refers to the backlight in an LCD TV. That's liquid crystal display, you know about that. So you have an LCD panel, which is like a 15 layer sandwich with light diffusers and polarizers and color filters. But in order to see the picture it makes, you've got to have light, and that's where the LEDs come in. Now most TVs today are full array local dimming. Us TV nerds call that fault, but you won't see that on a box. And that just means that there are LEDs scattered all along the back of the panel as opposed to just on the top and bottom edges. You will find some TVs today that are edge lit, but those are getting pretty rare. Next up is QLED. This is a term that Samsung coined, but is now used by other manufacturers as well. This is an LED TV, but it uses something called quantum dots to enhance the color and brightness. That's where your Q comes in. As simple as it may seem, you can expect for a QLED TV to be on the premium spectrum due to its better overall performance, especially for HDR, which is an acronym we'll get to in a minute. Onward now to Mini LED. This is also an LED TV, and in fact, it's probably a QLED TV too with those quantum dots in play. But the LED backlights are much, much smaller, and they're like thousands more of them. What that gets you is better control of the lights behind the LCD panel, and that usually means better black levels, sharper lines around bright objects on a dark background, and better overall contrast. Right now, this is the most advanced type of LCD-based TV, and there just aren't many of them, but we do expect to see lots more of this kind of technology in 2021. Now we move to micro LED, and this is where we really get away from the LCD panel. There is no LCD panel at all, and therefore there are no LED backlights. Instead, a micro LED TV has super tiny red, green, and blue LEDs that make up the pixels on the screen. They make their own light, so this is called an emissive TV technology. It's remarkable, with perfect black levels, incredible brightness, and remarkably accurate color. The catch is that it's only available in really large screen sizes, and it's really hard to come by. Samsung has this tech on the market, but it's super expensive and not available in normal screen sizes like 55 inch or 65 inch. So as incredibly cool as they are, you probably are not buying a micro LED TV this year or next year even. Now it's time to talk OLED. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode and like micro LED, it's an emissive TV technology. Here you get red, green, blue, and white subpixels with organic matter in them that glow when you apply electricity. The advantages here are perfect black levels, very good brightness, excellent color, and very fast response time. Unlike micro LED, you might wanna actually buy one of these TVs this year. They're insanely thin, they look amazing, and we've rated an OLED as best TV of the year for like four years running now. And I don't think that's gonna change this year either. Only downside is that since we're dealing with organic matter, it does decay. So burn-in is a potential issue for some buyers. Now we're gonna take a step away from legit TV types and move into marketing land. The following TV acronyms are really just badges for TV brands to help set themselves apart. The first is XLED. This is a term Vizio uses to badge its LED TVs with full array local dimming, and we're probably gonna see less and less of this in the coming years as they pivot and call their TV something else. Then there's ULED, which is what Hisense uses to describe their TVs with quantum dots and full array local dimming. They could have just called them QLED, but this is their premium brand and they wanna stand out. Hisense does have a cool dual layer LCD technology that fits under ULED, but doesn't really define it. Now, let's get away from TV types altogether and talk about some of the other acronyms that you will be hearing a lot about. And we're gonna get into this with HDMI 2.1. HDMI stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface, and 2.1 is the latest version. You are almost certainly familiar with the HDMI cable since you've probably been using one for years, but if not, here's what it looks like. 
Through HDMI 2.1, we get some cool new features. And hey, guess what? More acronyms. One of them is VRR, which stands for Variable Refresh Rate. And this is great for gamers because it makes gaming smoother with less screen tearing and smearing. Previously, you would only get this kind of tech in high-end gaming monitors. Next is ALLM, which stands for Auto Low Latency Mode. And this has existed in TVs for a while now, but it's just now getting a name and getting standardized. Anytime a TV can detect a game console or a PC and automatically go into game mode, reducing input lag, that's basically auto low latency mode. Finally, there's EARC. This replaces regular ARC and stands for Enhanced Audio Return Channel. This is technology that allows audio to be passed from your TV to a soundbar or AV receiver or maybe some other kind of powered speakers. With EARC, you can now get lag-free, full-resolution audio passed to your other components. It's actually super cool stuff, and I'm excited for it this year. Now let's talk about HDR. This is a picture quality-related acronym, which stands for High Dynamic Range. You might be familiar with HDR from photography, like your phone has an HDR mode, right? This is similar, but as it applies to your TV. Now, there are a few different versions of HDR. One is HDR10 which is your basic every HDR TV supports it flavor of HDR. Then there is HDR 10 plus, which is an enhanced version of HDR 10 that uses dynamic metadata to improve HDR performance from scene to scene. Then there's HLG, which stands for Hybrid Log Gamma. And you can think of this as the broadcast standard for HDR, which means if you're using an antenna or maybe getting an HDR feed via satellite or cable for say like the Super Bowl or the Olympics, it'll probably come as an HLG signal. And finally, it's not an acronym, but we have Dolby Vision, which is another really popular version of HDR and a bit more advanced than the other types that we just talked about. Okay, how you feeling? If you feel like you missed something, watch the video again and I think you're gonna get it. Hopefully, you feel a little bit more armed and ready to go shopping for that new TV. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Please do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and as always, visit digitaltrends.com for the latest tech news and reviews.